Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. We've got a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump right in. So today, you may have noticed that a little bit of a red day, which is not surprising as the things that are going on we're going to talk about. And all I can tell you is that the guy or the person at the end of the day with the least worries is the winner. Remember that as we go over all these things. We're going to talk about, uh, of course, Bitcoin sell off in Germany. We're going to take a look at uh, Solana and Fire Dancer. We're going to take a look at Hamster Combat. We're going to take a look at World Mobile Token. We're going to take a look at Mt. Gox and a whole host of other things. So let's just dive right into it. So today, hey, it, if it went straight up and it was easy, everybody would do it. But there's a reason why, like most of the people here, especially in the comment section, I see the usual suspects are here. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming back. And it's... it's uh, not too much of a big deal, especially as we start to slope downwards. Now, over the last 24 hours, we're down 1%. In the last hour or so, a little bit down. And we can see some trending tokens, such as like TonCoin, which is, I got to tell you, I'm thankful for. It's, only, it's around 7 bucks. I'm really getting tired of paying for high prices for these digital assets when they should all be going down so I can pick them up for cheap. So I like to see these. These are good days for me because of the specific reasons of what we're going to talk about. I actually put this tweet out last night and I was like, yeah, so we're going to hit, this is like 54,000. I was just perusing the different uh, price action. And I was like, look, wake me up when we hit 30K. Now I'm not saying we're going to hit 30K, but I'm just saying, if by me saying 30K gives you palpitations or a little bit of angst or anxiety, you might want to start to think about, did I invest too much? And if you did, I will direct your attention to the rules underneath my enormous head which says rules, it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam. The only thing on exchange is don't use leverage to take profits. So if this price action right here at 54,000 is like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. You need to reevaluate what's going on. And it's nothing, nothing bad, it really comes down to this. Again, the guy at the end of the day with the least worries is the winner. So I wanna give a shout out to a gentleman who's been watching the show for quite some time. And I actually put that tweet out about that 54,000 and Matt here says, hey, look, and this is how I feel. He says, look, I sold enough a few weeks ago to make a down payment on my house. Now I'm not stressed at all in terms of what it will do on a day to day basis, whatever. More buying opportunities. And I feel like I should have put that 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 gif or gif of people standing up applauding because that's what I'm talking about here. I, now, I can't give you a financial advice because everybody's situation is different. Some people say, well, Matt did the wrong thing. He should have held until the massive bull run that's about to come. And then some people say Matt did the wrong thing because he should have held on for a millennia to give to his kids and grandkids. And the thing that you guys don't, some, well, not you guys, but some people understand is, is this. Matt's goals are not my goals. My goals are not your goals and everything in between. So whatever Matt wants to do, where he doesn't have so much pressure on him, I support Matt for doing that. So congratulations, Matt. It seems to have worked out for you. You don't feel so stressed. You don't have angst. You don't have, like I said, heart palpitations. You're feeling pretty good. And these are the days when numbers like this come up, nobody gets scared. So that's that part about a little bit of, of, of the mental aspect of it. Now, remember, there is good news. I don't know what the flow is going to be like today, but as far as like for the ETF tracking of Bitcoin, on Friday, we had a nice inflow. And I wasn't uh, particularly aware this actually happened, but it's a pretty good one. I mean, we had Fidelity at 2104. BlackRock was flat. BitB, whatever, 541. Of course, Grayscale, usual suspect, keeps dumping on us. But hey, that's okay. I mean, it is what it is. But if we take a look at the flows, I mean, we're still, when Bitcoin's, I mean, when it, we topped out in March or so, I mean, Bitcoin was uh, 150,000 for the total net flows, 165,000. Now we're over 252,000. So when you look at stuff like this and people talk about it, they're like, oh, well, everything's going to be okay. There should be no, no price suppression, or excuse me, there's no sell pressure. No, that's, that's not it, unfortunately. It comes out a lot of things that are going on. Germany. Now, we talked about this yesterday when a friend of the show, Jerry B. Hall, came on. I want to say thanks, Jerry, for coming on and explaining some things. Really liked, always liked to have Jerry on. And this is from Arkham, from Arkham Intel. And they said, yeah, Germany, the government itself, just sent another 5,200 Bitcoin or almost 300 million to Kraken. Bitstamp, Coinbase, and 139 Po, right after we post this tweet. That makes this the biggest day for them so far, over 16,000 Bitcoin in total. Which I gotta tell you, I mean, if they're transferring it, they're probably putting it in queue to sell. 
I don't think they did that just because for giggles. So, you know, we could see some more sell pressure. We'll see if it comes down right now. The last hour is 0.1%. I don't know where it's going to go. Nobody really does know. But there was, we talked about this yesterday about it made no sense as to why, you know, there was a transfer of Bitcoin from Germany to a central exchange and then back to Germany. Some people were saying, well, they bought it back. They didn't buy it back. Germany's got problems. Germany's got issues. Germany's got a deficit problem, like a lot of different countries. They're going to dump that stuff like crazy. So don't think that they all of a sudden just got enlightened for Bitcoin. They're going to sell all this. So they currently hold 23,787 Bitcoin. That's 1.35 billion. Less than half of the Bitcoin seized from whatever this illegal operation was, movie 2K. And that got me thinking, well, if that puts pressure on it right now, what does that mean for the rest of the, of the countries? There's a great website. It's called BitcoinTreasuries.com. There's a link in the description. You can check this out. We talked about this many a time. And ETFs, I don't know if you knew this, but ETFs themselves, they hold over 1 million Bitcoin. That's 5%. I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. And I think for the ETFs, as we start to ramp up and then price action starts to appreciate, I think the ETFs will be at 2 million Bitcoin. That'll be 10% of the total supply. Do you think they can do it? I hope they do. They'll put the price up. And if the price of Bitcoin goes up, guess what happens to all coins? Exactly. However, on the flip side of that, as for every bullish case and, you know, moon boys out there, you got to give the negative part of the bearish case. Here's what we got. Germany, and I'm sure this isn't accurate right now because they've sold off, but Germany itself had 50,000 Bitcoin from whatever that seizure was. UK has also sold off and now they're around 61,000. Might be lower, not for sure. China, the Great Wall, who knows? Looks like they have 194,000. And USA has 207,000. So if you think this like this little trip of you know Germany selling off and this negative price action is something bad, just wait. I mean, USA has got a pretty big debt. And depending on who gets in the White House, if it's going to be the incumbent, if it's going to be Trump, or if it's going to be RFK Jr., you could see some sell-off of Bitcoin as well. We'll see. And then let's not forget about Ukraine. I think they could also use the money as well. For some reason, I don't know why they're not selling. I think they actually should. Might help them in their situation. Dump it on me. I can take it. So that's just that part. And then on top of that, let's not forget about Mt. Gox. And uh, this is one of the boogie stories that I, or the boogeyman stories I heard coming in. And now it's actually coming to fruition. I can't actually believe it, that they're actually paying them back after 10 years. But here we go. So just so you know, this has already been, there's been some distributions, but not as much. And it's being distributed to these centralized exchanges and they're to distribute to their, their creditors. So according to the agreement with the Mt. Cox trustees, Bitstamp has 60 days to distribute the tokens, though we are of course working to make sure those investors are made whole as soon as possible. That is from a representative of Bitstamp, they said in a statement. And on top of that, it's not just Bitstamp. Kraken has a long deadline because Bitstamp has 60 days. Kraken has 90 days to process the payouts. As mentioned, Bitstamp will take up to 60 days while BitGo will take 20. This matters because there is a lot more Bitcoin still to come. Well, the trustees sent 47,000 Bitcoin, which is only 2.7 billion. Not that much. I mean, compared to like the massive amount of market cap that Bitcoin is over a trillion. To BitBank and SBIVC Trade still has a further 94,000 Bitcoin or $5.4 billion remaining to be distributed. So if we start to see this, and I still believe that Mt. Cox people will sell off, correct me in the comments section, but I'm telling you right now, people who are smart enough at some point or actually need to take profits, like look, not everybody's the same, right? Like what we were talking about with Matt. Matt took profits because he needed to pay, pay his uh, down payment. I took profits in, in uh, March and in May because I had to pay for a down payment for a new property. And some people just need these, need, are like, I'm sick of waiting around for 10 years. And some people, and you'll see this in the comment section today, believe this bull runs over. So if you think this bull runs over, then you think those people who got Bitcoin from Mt. Gox and they're thinking to themselves, hey, uh, if this bull runs over, I'm not waiting another four years. That's 14 years of my life I've been waiting think they're going to sell. Some of them, maybe, not all. So last part I'll say is this, and I'll get to more, more positive pastures, is the question always comes up, well, who cares? It's billions, right? But you got to understand, we are irrational 
individuals floating around in this world. And we do irrational things. And we start to see a sell-off. And what, is, what do people think? Like, who? this is it. Uh, I mean, this shouldn't be. The indicators aren't really there in, in that favor. But if this is the sell-off and you know the, the bull runs over, I got to dump all this stuff as soon as I possibly can. That's herd mentality. And when you have that and you have leverage traders and you're getting cascade liquidations, you have thin order books on different centralized exchanges, you have bot trading, arbitrage, slip, slippage, stop loss orders, and everything in between, when things go negative, they go real negative. On the flip side, when they go positive, they go real positive. And it's hard to deal with that. So when people ask me, like, well, who cares about a billion here or a billion there? What's like Ben says, what's a couple billion among friends? It leads down to a cascading road of negative price pressure. So that's what we got right there. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. <sighs> and let's get into some little altcoins, right? Because I know Bitcoin's great. Everybody loves Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. But, you know, there's other projects out there that could do pretty well. I mean, right now, if Bitcoin doubled, we'd be at 110,000. Right now, if World Mobile doubled, it's very low cap. So I want to bring this to everybody's attention. First of all, before we, I play this video, uh, I am an Earth Node operator, and I've been buying World Mobile for like two years now. So if, if, uh, if you're thinking to yourself, Rob's not biased, uh, you're wrong. Rob is super biased. And I only talk about things in this channel that I own, and I usually own a lot of it. So uh, take this with a grain of salt. But I did like this because, I mean, World Mobile is essentially, they're going to be connecting the unconnected with these aerostats, or if you want to call them helium balloons, that's pretty much what they are. But they're already rolling this out into parts of Africa, Tanzania, and then parts of the United States, which I was, I was aware of. I just didn't know they were actually doing this. So listen to this gentleman talk. He sounds kind of like me. He's a uh, property owner and he has tenants and he's actually rolling this out right now and using this for his people who are staying at his properties and they're getting internet, unlimited data, and they're also getting cellular service, which I'm like, that's pretty crazy. So hold on, let me make sure you can hear this. I want you to hear this crystal clear. It's only like 30 seconds. Take a listen. So far we've installed air nodes in six or seven of our properties. Uh, every air node we've installed so far has added a lot of benefit to our tenants. Not just internet service, which is very beneficial to them, but also cellular service. We have a lot of buildings in some in rural areas where they don't have good reception, and their reception problem is solved by installing a world mobile satellite. And now they have internet and fantastic cellular service. Okay, that sounds great, right? But the thing that I always think about is cost analysis. Well, what is the cost for that? How much is that going for? And what is the competition? Because you may be aware that there's like another service called Starlink from Tesla. There's another service uh, called Helium Mobile. Of course, I don't know if that's, that's just cellular service. So I asked this question uh, to the team. I said, hey, World Mobile team, do you guys have a cost basis set up fee and monthly fees for what the people in the video would have to pay? And again, this is in Reno, Nevada, United States. This could be great to show people on my show. Also, I'd like to see how much it costs for Starlink. Now, Starlink in the United States is pretty pricey, if I'm not mistaken. And then you can sound off in the comment section. But for this, I believe this is a lower cost basis of what they're actually uh, having to pay for. But I'd like to do a little side-by-side -side comparison about how it all works. But I like this. I like to see where this is going. This is actual real, real, world utility. This is revenue. And this is where things are supposed to go in crypto. Things actually work and do stuff instead of stupid meme coins would do absolutely nothing and it's a lottery ticket which everybody gets <laughs> you not everybody there's there's some winners but a lot of losers and so i like where that the direction is going that looks good on top of that if we're going to talk about you know world mobile token and you know cardano and how they're they're working with it and aya and their their side chain we also have to talk about solana and the reason why we have to talk about that is because again i own it and i'm super biased so Hey, at least I'm honest. So with this one, uh, Solana Fire Dancer is uh, going to go live for a 1 million bug bounty. I'd like to see what this, how this can do. Now, what I know about this for the Solana Fire Dancer is apparently it's going to massively increase throughput and transactions per second, or which there's a slight difference, but 
TPS, I think, is already blazingly fast on Solana. We've done this. We've done this in giveaways. We've done this on live streams. I'm able to transfer things to and from people in the comment section with, I mean, fractions of a penny and in under five seconds. So I would like to see how this goes out. What they're doing is they're, they're offering a million dollar bug bounty. This will run for 42 days from July 10th to August 21st. Essentially, they are rewarding hackers to find all the screw ups in the code. So once this happens after that, so you're looking at August 21st, I'm not for sure when this actually goes live live, but they have to run this first. Then they would make it go live. Then we'll see how it actually works. That's a good news for Solana. I like to see that moving forward. And then also, one of my pet projects that I uh, like to always talk about is uh, Hamster Combat. I know it sounds ridiculous, and it kind of is. It's a clicker game. It's on the open network. Some people call that ton coin. And uh, just so you know, it looks like Bybit is listing the token itself. Why is that important? Well. It's important because this airdrop has been going on for or the accumulation of points forever, it seems like. But it hasn't been that long, maybe two months or so, maybe three. But it's interesting how fast this community has grown. Their YouTube channel has 32 million subscribers. Their X account or Twitter has 11 and a half million. Their Telegram has 50 million. And they're now going to... Uh, come out with their airdrop, but they're doing uh, this through Bybit. And Bybit lists Hamster Combat's token for pre-market trading. Before we go on, I've already had people question me about where they can buy this and what the ticker and what the smart contract is. I don't know. And all I can tell you is that it's only on Bybit that I know. And if you see this on ERC20 or somewhere else, that's not how it should be. It should only be on the open network or TonCoin. So everything else that you think that's out there, and there's a boatload already, they're all scams. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. That's rule number two. So I like to see how this is going. The question I have, though, is what's the utility? And does it actually have longevity? And I will just bring your attention to the previous clicker game on the open network, which was called NotCoin. And that one probably did, I don't know, 30% of what Hamster Combat did. And that token today, right now as we're sitting here, is up 10% by market cap. It's almost in the top 50. It's ranked number 52. Market cap is $1.7 billion. And the circling supply, total supply, and max supply is already out there. So there's no dumpage or anything like that. So if Hamster Combat can do anything like that, We'll see how it goes. The utility itself is you're going to be able to use that token throughout the open network on their wallets and their ecosystem that they're that they're doing. And there's a lot of things that are happening in there. Whole another video for some other day. So we'll see how it works out. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And to wrap this up, I just want to give a shout out. To, uh, we're doing a fundraiser now. Uh, lately, the last uh, month or so, we've been doing this for John Deaton as he uh, tries to dethrone. Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts. I personally believe he can. I did a whole video on why he can do it. Uh, but there's other people in need, and I wanted to shine the light on that. There's a link in the description. This is Audrey. And you guys, if you follow me on X, you'll know that we do dog walks on Sundays here in Puerto Rico, and it's an animal shelter. And it's a great cause, and they do great things, but Audrey here is having uh, problems. The problem is, is that she donated her entire house to be the shelter for all these dogs 20 years ago. And right now she's living in a very tiny room and has no real space to herself and upgrades are drastically needed. So I started a GoFundMe for her. And uh, if you could find your heart to donate, you know, $10 here, whatever you got, so we can build up a second, a second story and she can have her own space and we can actually also help the animal shelter itself. Links in the description. And there's a description that I wrote up as far as like, why this is needed and what's going on, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is pretty time sensitive, but that's it for this piece.